tiling. Before we continue we're going to switch our code to use the UV value for the plane rather than the position value. Recall that UV is not not in the lower left corner and 1 1 at the top right whereas position is minus 1 minus 1 0 at the lower left and 1 1 0 at the top right. For the next example it's better that the values are in the range 0 to 1 rather than in the range minus 1 to 1. We could achieve the same result by adding 1 to position then dividing it by 2. In the vertex shader change the variant to varying vec2 vuv and the v position line to vuv equals uv. In the fragment shader switch the varying declaration. Great, now we're ready to work with tiling. First we'll create a float that says how many tiles we're creating. Enter float tile count equals 6. Change center to vec2 0.5 and enter vec2p equal fract v uv times tile count. Now edit the pt assignment to replace v position dot xy with p. Hey presto we now have six rotating squares across and if you have a square window then six rotating squares down. If your window's not square then part of the plane will be cut off and you will see fewer rotating squares. Did you think that tiling would be really hard? But it really isn't. First we create a tile count variable. In this instance we use the value 6. Go ahead and change this value and run it again. So how do we convert from a tile count to multiple squares? We use the GLSL function fract. This takes a single parameter and returns a decimal value, stripping off the whole number value. So 1.5 becomes 0.5 and 6.7 becomes 0.7. How does this result in six squares? Effectively, we've divided our screen into six spaces of zero to one coordinates across the screen and down the screen. By multiplying a pixel by six and then taking only the fractional part, we have 0 to 1, 0 to 1, 0 to 1, etc. six times across the screen and six times down the screen. We then call the rec method as though it is dealing with the coordinate space 0 to 1. Now is a great time to play with the tiling value. Try adjusting this to 10 or 20 or even 1. What happens if you change tile count to a VEC2 type and have different values for X and Y? The coordinate space will no longer be square and you'll get a square that is stretched in one direction. The important takeaway is our plane model coordinates are in the range minus 1 to 1 and texture coordinates in the range 0 to 1. We've switched the range of the model coordinates to 0 to 1 by swapping to the texture coordinates, the UV values. For this tiling trick to work you need a coordinate space of 0 to 1. OK, enough squares. This video is taken from the course Learn GLSL Shaders from Scratch. A link to the complete course is in the description below.